www.polopunchboxinghour.com streaming to you live as always on ustream.tv and this is the one where i think our phone lines are probably going to get uh get used up so timmy have your phone ready um also get ready with that uh Instant with, with your instant message, your, your chat line, your, your chat room there on uh, Ustream. Um, because we are going to talk about the Thrilla in Manila. <gasps> uh, easily one of the greatest heavyweight fights of all time. Great, um, one of the greatest fights of all time. Absolutely. Uh, there are people that say that it was the greatest uh, heavyweight fight, the greatest fight ever. I'm not sure it's the greatest fight of all time, but it's definitely... <clears throat> one of the most dangerous to watch, one of the, the most uh, brutal to watch, that these two guys took themselves to the depths of hell the way that they did, and, and both came out changed for life. Um, now, I mean, I, so we watched this, this awesome documentary on HBO this, um, this past weekend. It was on actually right before the Ariola McCline and uh, Williams and Winky Wright fight. Um, and one thing that I appreciate I don't know if I appreciate it for the right reasons, but I appreciate it. I appreciate the fact that Joe Frazier was actually given time to talk about what his take on that 30-year-old event was. What was it like, champ, going through those motions and fighting that fight? What was it like training for that fight? What was it like all the press for that fight? What was it like in the ring? And what has your life been like for the 30 years since? Nestor, what do you got there, man? You know what I, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the show. I I've I grew up watching Muhammad Ali uh, Cassius Clay. In fact, my mother met him on a street corner in Chicago when he was on his soapbox talking up talking up a storm about why he should be allowed to fight because he was a conscientious objector and my mother was actually very upset about that, uh, because he thought he should have gone like everybody else should have gone. Uh, she thought that? Yes, she did. Okay. Okay. Uh, she she didn't. She was a big fan. Um, I enjoyed I enjoyed the fact that that I, know, I got a big kick out of, of Joe Frazier talking about how Muhammad Ali is getting what he deserved from what he did when he was younger. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody deserves Parkinson's, obviously. But I enjoyed I enjoyed the show. I thought it was great. I thought it was a great documentary. I thought it was an awesome awesome display of of what was. Uh, of what he what they went through in that fight, uh, what Joe Frazier went through. That, in all honesty, I, I I feel Joe Frazier got the short end of the stick. Oh, most definitely. Emil, you weren't able to uh, to actually watch it. You'll be watching it sometime this week, I'm sure. Yeah. They, pl they played it a couple of times, but I seen uh, little bits of it. I didn't see the whole thing. But everything we've seen, I mean, I mean, it w this fight happened the month you were born. Yeah. Happened in October of '75. I was three months old when this fight happened. Um, I was ten. No one asked you, old man. <laughs> well, you look. But but I mean, tell me that all the press and documentary and 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 memorabilia and everything you've ever seen your entire life on that fight, Thrill in Manila. Tell me it hasn't all been about Ali. Yeah, it has all been about Ali. Uh, it, it, a little bit about the from when we talked to Bert Sugar and uh, other guys of of that era. Obviously, they talk talk about the heat and uh, what these guys had to deal with inside that ring. Not just, not just, not just the, each other. Yeah, each other. It was, I believe, they said twenty five. Yeah. Oh my God. It's sickening. Yeah. That, and and you got to remember, they weren't fighting twelve rounds then either. They were fighting fifteen rounds. So, uh, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot to endure. Not just, the, not just with each other. <laughs> with, uh, I mean, obviously, sports has changed a little bit. Now they're fighting in air conditioned arenas. Now they're fighting uh, 12 rounds, or now you're not fighting Muhammad Ali. <laughs> you're also, or Joe you're also weighing in. You're also weighing in the day before. Yeah, um, instead of the day of. But uh, I mean, with heavyweight, you can still you're not cutting water weight. It's different. Well, yeah, but, but weigh-ins do matter. Weigh-ins do matter in heavyweight, especially when you're Muhammad Ali as old as you are at this point. Yeah. He's older than Frazier. He's, he's like three or four years older than him, and he was not able to get the belly off of him the way he could before. Um, welcome welcome to the show right now, Pete Perry, our good friend from upstate New York. Pete, how you doing tonight, man? Hey, good. How's everybody doing there? Everyone's doing fine. We, we just really wanted to uh, to get your take on this. Uh, I know you, uh, you as as your uh, your feature writer status on your, on your website there, um, 
you wrote a, a big old article that I have not had the chance, unfortunately, to read just yet. So first of all, uh, congratulations on that. Um, Thanks, Chris. G- Appreciate me, that. No problem, man. Give me your take on, on this documentary. What were your thoughts on it? Okay, well, first, I just want to preface it with just two quick comments. One, that I am an Ali fan. Just want to make that completely clear so that everyone we knows. Are. Um, and then the second thing is, is I give all respect to Joe Frazier as a great fighter, great heavyweight champion. That's the other thing that I wanted to preface the, my comments with. Now, um, what I wanted to say about the documentary is that, I mean, you got to admit, the thing was uh, fiercely partisan. I mean, it was told uh, strictly from Joe Frazier's point of view, and the producer himself said that he set out purposely to do that. So, I mean, you're, you're only telling one side of the story. Then the other point I wanted to make just real quick is that Frazier, in, in speaking about Muhammad Ali um, and his mean-spiritedness, and, and there's something else I want to touch on. I am the first one to say the comments Ali made, calling Frazier and Uncle Tom and calling him ignorant, those were wrong. Those were wrong in any era, in any sense, against any color, any race, anyone, okay? Well, but he, he, he's talking about Ali being so mean-spirited and so forth in his comments, and then he talks about things like when Ali was lighting the Olympic torch, he wanted to push him into the flames, and he was reveling in in what part he played in the declining physical condition of Ali today. And, and, I mean, so he comes off just as mean-spirited is what I'm saying. And I think that, the, that Frazier needs to let it go. I mean, he needs to forgive the man, you know, and <laughs> let it go. So Wait, see, pers- hold, on, pers- Pete, hold on, Pete, hold on, Pete. I'm a bitter man, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Let, let, me, let, me, let me interrupt a second. And, and I don't mean to be argumentative and be pissed off about this. But, yes, he does. But what, what, <laughs> what, Muhammad, what Muhammad Ali did... Joe Frazier went to bat for this man. He went in front of Congress to get him back his license. He, 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 he did everything in the world. He surveyed him. He paid money. He loaned him money. He gave him money. It, it, it just, it, and to turn around and do what Ali did, to sit on national TV and call him an Uncle Tom and tell this white reporter that he trusted him more than he did this black man, he's a different type of, of, of N-word as far as he was concerned. I have a real issue with that. Mean-spirited? Oh, I'd be more than mean-spirited. I thought Joe Frazier was an extreme gentleman in what he said and what he did. If I would have been Joe Frazier, I probably would have refused this interview because I would have been a hell of a lot more mean-spirited than he was. That was just wrong. Yeah, but you got to remember... Ali, Ali stabbed his friend in the back. You got to remember that's Ali though. Ali always played up to the cameras. Well, he always did that what? with everybody, I, and that he did that to he, sell the sport. Well, yeah. I mean I, Jeffrey yeah, Dahmer no. just ate a few people. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, that, you can't go overboard with this that, stuff. That, you know, selling the sport is one thing. Trash talking is fine, but to sit there and trash talk and and totally annihilate and and badmouth your friend, Emil, you would probably be as upset with me as Joe Frazier is with Ali, is if I did that to you, I'm losing my house, you're going to loan me money, and then I'm going to go out and say, and, and badmouth you in front of other people. You know, I mean, we're not on the same level as these guys are because it's a whole different issue. We're not as as, as widely known names, but what, he, what Ali did was wrong, completely wrong. I, I lost a lot of respect for Muhammad Ali in this interview. I didn't realize that all this, when I was 10 years old, it was a whole different situation for me because I didn't realize this was going on in the background. But I do now, and, and I did lose a whole lot of respect for Ali. I really did. And do I wish him that he had Parkinson's? No. No, I don't. I don't wish that on anybody. Yeah. But, but do, I, do I fault Joe Frazier for being bitter and not letting it go? I probably wouldn't let it go either. I really wouldn't. Sorry, Pete, I didn't mean to interrupt no. No, I respect what you're saying. I mean, I, I agree yeah. with it. I Pete, mean, he Pete, did, we, uh, Pete, he did excuse me, Pete, after we have to, we're after gonna take he a break, Pete. So much during the time that he hey, was Pete, yeah, we're gonna take a break. Here. We'll be right back um, at you. This is Pete, Bolo Punch. We'll be right back at you. Pete, hang on. Hang